In our last video, I hinted at the possibility of a sleeper PC. What's a sleeper PC? Well, something that has a bunch of newer components inside of an older case. From the outside, it wouldn't look like much until you take the side panel off and you reveal the glory that is within. And I think we've got great candidates here for one. We're gonna build our first ever true sleeper PC on this channel, and I'm sure it won't be all that straightforward. Stay with me. Shop AliExpress's biggest sale of the year, Singles Day, starting from November 11th to November 17th. Find your favorite tech gear, including everything you'll need to build your next gaming PC. I found some Corsair Vengeance DDR4 at a sweet and low price, and no, it didn't take very long to arrive. AliExpress often has name brands at competitive prices, making them perfect for budget builds without immediate deadlines. And with their offer code all on AE, you can save an additional $25 off orders of 100 or more during this sale. Not not only was I able to find this 16 gig DIMM at a great price on AliExpress, but I also spotted this Western Digital SN770 NVMe, a PCIe Gen 4 drive with ultra fast reads and writes. Storage like this is compact, easy to install, and comes with great manufacturer warranties for peace of mind for years to come. And thanks to AliExpress's great prices, you may be able to purchase a larger capacity drive than you otherwise would have buying locally. In my opinion, it never hurts to shop multiple places before placing an order on anything. And in the case of PCs, it could mean the difference between a 500 gig storage drive and a one terabyte one, or 16 gigs of DDR4 versus 32. And if you shop during AliExpress's biggest sale of the year, you could save even more in the process. Between November 11th and 17th, again, use code ALLONAE to save $25 on orders of 100. That's ALLONAE, A-L-L-O-N-A-E, to use at checkout. And act fast, these singles day sales are only running for a limited time. At the heart of every true sleeper PC, we have a good case. And what I mean by good is actually a bad case. It has to be old, not necessarily bad in the airflow sense. It can be a good airflow case. It just has to look old, maybe even ugly. You want it to mislead whoever looks at it from the outside, right? You don't suspect really good components to be inside of something like this because it doesn't have the gamer kind of flair to it. It doesn't have that modern sleek look and that's the entire point. I could have gone with something much older than this, perhaps even much uglier, but I like how compact this one is. So before you jump to the comments and say, well, Greg, that's not actually a true sleeper case. I'd argue there are even modern cases out there that you could build sleeper PCs in. They just have to be misleading. That's my only goal here is to make it look a lot worse on the outside than it actually is on the inside. Now this HP ProDesk case is definitely not the cleanest. We're gonna take this thing apart even further than it already is and wash it outside with water like we do in our PCDC playlist. I wanna make sure all these cables and things are clean. I want it to look as good as possible here on the inside, but I don't wanna spray paint anything. I don't want it to look you know, like really clean on the inside. I still wanna preserve the look of the case. I just wanna stuff it with a bunch of really high-end components and clean up cable management along the way. And one of the other reasons why I like this case, apart from its size, the fact that airflow isn't totally bad. We get grills up and down the entire front panel here, so uh, it won't get too toasty in there. But one of the constraints of a smaller case is hardware support. While airflow is expected to be actually decent, we are gonna have issues with graphics card fitment We'll have issues with CPU cooler fitment and AIO is pretty much out the window in this build because we don't have anywhere to mount a 120 or a 240 mil combo. And that's why we've chosen what we have here. This is by no means the most powerful hardware combination imaginable, not even close, but it is still fairly modern and it will still kick butt in games today, which I'll show you later in the video. Starting first with our CP, we've got a Ryzen 5 7600 here. I wanted to go with a lower TDP chip so that we can run a lower profile CPU cooler with it, but still reap the benefits of a newer architecture. Speaking of low profile, we've got a Pure Rock LP here, 100 watt TDP, looks super sleek. This is gonna bolt directly to our socket. I think this is gonna look really good and it's gonna keep our CPU temps in check while not taking up too much space inside of our smaller case. System memory is pretty straightforward, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RGB, even though we're not gonna be able to see the RGB, why not? For our motherboard, an ASRock B650M, it needs to be an MATX board because again, of the constraints of our case. And to round out the platform, how about a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe WD Black. This is the one you probably just saw in our pre-roll. Picking the right graphics card was challenging. I immediately ruled out anything in the high-end 40 series lineup. It's just, there's no way any of those bulky coolers are gonna fit in this Pro Desk. I did wanna throw in a 7900 XTX, but that card was far too long for the Pro Desk. And so I eventually settled on the 3060 Ti. This card not only looks really good, but it does have some silverish accents as well, which I think is gonna help kind of blend in that very shiny metallic finish 
finish inside the case. It also is not extremely overpowered or anything. It's not gonna run extremely hot in our case and just requires a single eight pin. We just have to use this silly little adapter here. And rounding things out, our power supply. This is a Pure Power 12M, a 1000 watt unit, which is definitely overkill for this, but uh, I wanted at least something to be overkill here. It's compact, so it fits nicely in the Pro Desk. It's also fully modular and 80 plus gold efficiency rated. And I think that just about wraps up the parts list. Now it's time to assemble things inside this case. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I wanna prep the case by, again, disassembling it as far as it will go. We're gonna remove this uh, rear smaller fan here. We're gonna deep clean that. We're gonna take the front panel off and we're gonna wash the entire case. I'm gonna remove excess stickers and things that, uh, that you could argue actually add to the sleeperish profile of the chassis, but uh, I want them removed. We do have some paint chips and things that we're not gonna be able to fix without a respray, but we're not gonna go overboard here. I just want it to look old, but you know, not disgusting. I think we're gonna go with a time-lapse for this section. I'll try to pick some music that doesn't totally offend everyone watching. It's always tough. You can never please everyone, but uh, I think I think I know what you're looking for. Something a bit spicy, but not overwhelming. Here we go. Well then, I've got to say this turned out a lot better than I expected. For my first ever, I think, official sleeper build, really didn't run into too many issues. I think the parts that we chose fit nicely. It was still a bit difficult to squeeze the graphics card in. We definitely couldn't have gone much bigger than this. And even cable management turned out quite nice thanks to this uh, large bar here that's is an integral part of the chassis. The only RGB in this build is actually in the DDR5, and I don't mind that. It actually glows and reflects nicely off of the uh, bare metal interior of this chassis. So when you have the right panel off, it does kind of give you that like sense that this is something unique, it's something 
special. It's not just your plain vanilla run-of-the-mill OEM build. That is, assuming you knew nothing else about electronics and had no idea that any of this was actually overkill. Now speaking more to that, there are likely much more powerful configurations you could squeeze into this. I was more or less working with some of the components I had on hand, and I, I unfortunately couldn't again pick a larger or more powerful graphics card. It just, I didn't have anything small enough that was more powerful than the 3060 Ti, and everything that was was just way too big to fit in here. On top of that, the CPU cooler, uh, being as small as it is, limited us in terms of our CPU potential as well. We could have gotten a more um, beefy top flow style cooler. That would have fit in here, no problem. But uh, I didn't have one on hand, and I wanted to get this video out before the holidays start cranking, because we have several other projects in the pipeline, along with some fix or flops and potentially PCDCs also coming back. So yeah, really happy with this. And if you're curious about performance, in 3D Mark Time Spy, this combination of hardware consistently scores anywhere between 11 and 12,000. And you can see that our graphics and CPU scores are very similar to each other. The CPU, at least in this test, is slightly less powerful, scoring slightly lower uh, than the graphics card. But this suggests overall that they're a very healthy combination. There's no serious bottleneck here, and we're still scoring better than over 60% of all submitted results. So. It, it's not a bad system by any means, and I'm not trying to downplay how good this hardware combination is. I just want to make it clear that, in my eyes at least, it doesn't matter if it's the most powerful thing or not. It's still a sleeper build, so long as the exterior of the build suggests that it's something much weaker than it actually is. I think in this case, when you remove the right panel, most folks are going to be pretty shocked. They're not going to expect something like this inside of an old HP pre-built. I do still need to rewire the front panel connector. It is slightly different in this case than it is like the standard JFP1 header you'll find on most modern motherboards, including this one. Uh, so just a very simple soldering, rewiring to get those pins lined up with the board, and we should be A-OK -okay there. For now, though, I just have to jump things to get it started. Um, but I, I've got to say, I really appreciate the challenges here. Like, they're not insurmountable by any means. I mean, the front panel thing is a, that's a very quick fix. Uh, cable management, I, like I said, I was actually able to kind of make use of this bar here, so I was able to hide most of them. It wasn't too challenging, but not being able to access space behind the motherboard tray does present its own challenges, and so you kind of have to work around those constraints. Same with the cooler, same with airflow, depending on the older case you choose, but I definitely, definitely want to try this again, probably sooner rather than later. I really actually love the way that this looks. I think it's so stealthy, so misleading in such a good way. Um, I've definitely got the itch now. So if you guys want to see another sleeper build assembled on this channel, recommend some older cases in the comments section. I'm not sure if you can hyperlink in the comments, but uh, if you find maybe an old eBay case or something that you'd like to see us build in, we'll certainly give it a look. I'm probably aiming for a beige tower next time. That's that's true, true sleeperish, right? This is still sleeperish, but if you want to go to the extreme sleeper end of things, you got to go with a beige full tower. I think there's no way around it. So that's the next step. And uh, if you find one that you want us to build in, again, comment it down below. Thank you so much for watching this one. If you haven't subscribed already, consider clicking that red button. If you want to get engaged in the comment section below or via our public free to access Discord server, that's linked in the description as well. And if you want to support us on Patreon, that's also down there, along with links to most of the components that uh, we've used for this build. Some of it's older, so it might link to eBay instead of Amazon, but you guys know the drill. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was definitely out of the box for me, but um, I had a lot of fun doing it. So more to come for sure. My name's Greg. Thanks for building with me.